You know, we have a saying in Tagalog, ang hindi lumilingon sa pinanggalingan ay hindi makararating sa paroroonan. If you don't know where you came from, you won't get to where you're going. It's a story of people. And to me, that's important. We have to see these characters as human beings, not just as symbolic. We have to understand what were they like, what motivated them. And the play, hopefully, will present successfully this human portrayals of people like Magellan, Enrique, Umabon, Lapu-Lapu. You know, so it's a story that comes alive because we see them as human beings with all their faults and their virtues. My name is Luis Francia and I'm a poet, playwright and adjunct professor at New York University. I wrote a play called Black Henry and it deals with Magellan and his Malay slave Enrique and the time period is 1521 when the Magellan expedition made landfall in the central part of the Philippines Cebu is where the play is set and Mactan and so the play uh, as people know 2021 is the quincentennial of the Magellan landfall in 1521 so the play reflects or seeks to examine the, the relationship between Magellan and his slave Enrique who could have been from the Philippines and the implications of Magellan's being in the Philippines and what it meant for the history of the Philippines. So the battle between Lapu-Lapu and Magellan took place on April 27, 1521. And Magellan, as we know, lost his life and the three ships uh, left the Philippines. Um, but there was a bloody ending in addition to the death of Magellan. Humabon, the Raja of Cebu, um, kills a number of the Spanish crew and we don't know what happened historically to Enrique but most likely he stayed behind and my play speculates as to what his fate is. I became interested many many years ago in the story of Magellan and the Philippines because I kind of think of it as the Big Bang of the Philippines. Uh, his voyage, of course, meant the coming of the West and the beginning, although the beginning of colonialism, although that was delayed by about 44 years, and the planting of the seed of Christianity. So that year was crucial in the evolution of the Philippines as we know it now with all the complexities that colonialism and Christianity have generated. Enrique in English is Henry and he was seen as black. You know, Enrique El Negro was how the crew referred to him. So you translate that black Henry. And of course you know, it kind of resonates because the crew, Magellan was white, he's black, or seen as black. And so there are implications in terms of race relations, in terms of colonialism. So there are all these layers that can be seen in the relationship between Magellan and Enrique, between Magellan, the Spanish Portuguese crew, and the natives, the indigenous people of that area. I read the journals of Pigafetta, who was on board for the whole uh, three-year voyage. 
and he is the primary source for what happened uh, on that voyage and I read it and then there was the mention of Enrique who becomes prominent once they get to Cebu because Enrique looks like the Cebuanos speaks their language so I said this is a great story who is this guy not much is known about him except during that portion of the voyage because suddenly he becomes important because he can speak the language prior to that you don't really hear or read of him in Pigafetta because he's a slave you know he's uh, he's not important prior to the landfall in the Philippines so I started to think of writing the story between Magellan and Enrique and what happens in the Philippines when they're there so that sparked my interest in the story I got a grant in 2003 to go to Cebu so I actually went to Mactan and I did research in some archives so I started writing it and maybe it took me two to three years to do a draft and then we did a reading so I wanted to hear what it sounded like and get a sense of the play and then I reworked it and then with Claro we did another reading uh, maybe five or six years ago and so if you look at maybe 2006 so the whole process may be about 15 years um, to get to this point where it's actually being produced online. So Claro is a friend and I've known Claro for many many years, Claro de los Reyes and he has his own theater group and it's a great name Atlantic Pacific Theater Group and of course those are the two oceans that Magellan uh, crossed you know Atlantic and then the Pacific and then back to the Atlantic. NYU we have a program called the Sulo Philippine Studies Initiative at NYU that began uh, in late 2020 and I am a member of the steering committee and I proposed a number of projects one of them was to do the play and this was before the pandemic so I said it would be great if we could stage the play physically and then the other project I proposed was a film series Hill Quito is the curator that's going through as well and then the pandemic hit but the King Juan Carlos Center which is the host for the Philippine Studies program basically said well we can do it online so I said sure great and that's when I got Claro to be involved and then the challenge of course is presenting it dramatically and convincingly online through using Zoom and we'll see how that works plays out when the first and foremost I hope they enjoy the experience as a theatrical experience but part of the enjoyment I think would be if they can see the way that Magellan in 1521 uh, played a central part in the formation and destiny of the Philippines and also to see Enrique as a prototype of the modern Filipino working abroad coming home the Balik Bayan the Filipino working for minimum wages the difficulties you know of the Filipino was already there when uh, Enrique returns and I'm assuming Enrique was from the Philippines and, not, and it isn't just me there are a number of historians believe that he was the first overseas Filipino worker to come home Balik Bayan so he's symbolic of the modern-day Filipino who needs to go abroad 
for a better life.